Hi, Luke Raymond from Inaccess Security Systems here. Today's topic is something people have been asking about. It's artificial intelligence and its impact on video. Let's discuss this a little bit. When discussing the topic of artificial intelligence, before you discuss the topic, you have to look at where video comes from, how it was traditionally processed and how alarms are traditionally triggered in video versus where it is now and where it's going in the future. Traditionally, we used to do something called motion detection. Well, motion detection was traditionally triggered by the NVR. What this means is that we had cameras. Those cameras send a video signal to an NVR over a network or over a coaxial cable, and then that NVR or DVR processes that signal and then records. Now, how this was done is called motion detection. What motion detection is, is changes in pixels. So what is a pixel? A pixel is a square of color. The more pixels I have, the more squares of color I have, the more I can zoom into an image before I start to see the edges of those squares called pixelization. What this means is that over time, we started to develop better and better cameras with more and more pixel count. And the higher the pixel count, the more I could zoom into an image before I started to readily identify what was happening in it. Back in the day, we used to have 640 TV lines by 480 lines, or uh, you know about 307,200 pixels. Well, when you have 300,000 pixels, you can't zoom in very much before you start to see the squaring off, the pixelization. So the way that motion detection worked is that if enough of the image, the pixels were changing from one image to the next, the NVR would compare one image to the next image and say, oh, enough pixels changed, I'm going to trigger recording. Well, this worked really, really well. The problem is, is as we started to increase resolution, well, we started to eat up more and more hard drives. We needed more and more processing power on the NVR and DDR side to be able to run motion detection. And what that means is that we said, well, hold on a second, we need to increase motion detection. So instead of just changes of pixels from one image to the next, one frame to the next, we started to do what was called smart motion detection, where the NVR was now able to say, well, hold on a second. Instead of changing from one image to the next, let's look at the image a little bit differently. Let me compare this image, this frame, to the 12 preceding frames. And instead of sending the full frame, the first step was to say, well, hold on, what if the whole image itself is not in movement? The whole image is not changing, but only this little corner here where something happened. So when we started to develop things like motion JPEG or H.264, we started to send only the changes, what's called iframes and preframes. One out of every, let's call it 12 images, 12 frames was a full frame sent, and only the changes in the other 11 were sent. Well, that was a way to expand the hard drive to take up less bandwidth and to expand the life of our video. But we were still stuck with traditional motion detection, where it was only the changes in pixels, any change in pixel would trigger that motion detection and eat up your hard drive. Well, what happens in a real world environment? Indoors, traditional motion detection worked really well. But when you got outside, and it's a windy day, and the grass is blowing, and the trees are blowing in the wind, well, for traditional motion detection, that was an alarm. Well, guess what? It's a false alarm because nothing is happening. If it's a rainy day and there's rain falling in a puddle, well, that traditionally was real motion detection. Well, that's a problem. So we started to add more and more intelligence into the NVRs and DVRs to compensate for this. Where now the NVRs and DVRs had a little bit of artificial intelligence, they were able to compare this image to the 12 preceding. And if ever it was a rainstorm and water's falling in this puddle, it was able to say, well, hold on a second. This puddle was in motion the entire time, and it continues to be in motion, so that's going to be fake motion. So it started to eliminate that, reduce false alarms, and once again, reduce the amount of bandwidth used and expand the length of our hard drives and the recording time. Well, even this wasn't good enough. So as we started to be able to add more and more artificial intelligence, more and more intelligence into our recorders, we started to be able to do things like human being detection, where I can teach the NVR that yes, a human being has a head, a torso, two arms and two legs. It can be a small human, a medium human, a large human, it doesn't matter, it corresponds to the shape of a human being. We were able to teach NVRs what an automobile is or a truck. And now we could say, well, we want to trigger only motion detection 
real motion detection, not if it's you know, movement in a puddle, but only if a human being is present or only if a vehicle is present. So this took artificial intelligence, by adding this artificial intelligence, took our recordings to the next step. Once again, reducing false alarms and the bandwidth and expanding the length of hard drive that the hard drive lasts. And making the most important thing in this is it makes searching for usable video that much easier. The less false video I have, the less false alarms, the less I have to search for, search through to find usable video of an actual event. Furthermore, the less actual events are triggered because all of the fake events are not there anymore. Now, that's traditionally how we've, we've gone about. We've then moved the small amount of artificial intelligence from the NVR side, maybe out to the camera side, because processors on cameras have gotten more and more powerful. Now we can trigger these smart events directly from the cameras, so there's a certain amount of AI built into the cameras themselves at the edge. Now you add the edge camera's intelligence to the NVR's camera's intelligence, and you start to get better and better video, less and less false alarms, more usable video. But that's not the limitation. We very quickly discovered that these limitations are because we're not using learning algorithms. Well, that's when we started to look at artificial intelligence in a different way. The ability to have an algorithm we can learn, which we can teach things to, such as the interactions between humans, human behavior detection. Well, that's where artificial intelligence systems like our archive system come into play, where we can teach it the interactions between humans, triggering things like active shooter detection, where it, can tr it understands that a human being can have a weapon in its hand, it understands that another human being can put up their arms and back away in fear. It also understands that human beings can throw themselves to the floor if they get injured. You put these three things together, it understands the interactions between these humans and can trigger active shooter detection. Now, once you start to get into this realm, like you do with Archive, human behavior detection can be taken to whole new levels such as the ability to teach a, an a, a NVR the difference between a person holding a rail, a handrail, and not holding a handrail to avoid people falling down the stairs. The difference between somebody standing up, sitting down, or lying down. Well, in a vestibule situation, well, you maybe don't want um, certain people falling asleep in an ATM vestibule. Well, that can be an algorithm in of itself because the, the recording is done by an artificial intelligent engine that can learn how humans behave and trigger alarms if humans are behaving erratically. Well, that's the current AI version. As AI is developing more and more and chipsets are becoming more and more powerful, the future is truly unknown. We don't know where AI will take us one day. Today, yes, we have the ability to create active alarms based upon facial recognition or license plate recognition, where I can say, if a human being is acting erratically, it's not the end of the world. However, if this person specifically walks into the building, create an alarm. If this person interacts with somebody else and has erratic behavior, or this person's license plate drives up, trigger a specialized event. These types of more active artificial intelligence, real-time engines running things have revolutionized security and will continue to revolutionize security in the future. Where is AI going to take us? We don't know. But as artificial intelligence gets better and better, as chipsets that can run AI get better and better, we're going to see more and more applications where the computers are taking these false alarms away and giving us simply actionable, usable video. Now, this is the future. And as the future comes with these AI developments, we're more and more looking at cloud storage and cloud activation. The reason for this is because you're limited on the amount of intelligence you can put on a closed box NVR. So this idea of NVRs and DVRs is slowly but surely going the way of the dinosaur. And we're, we're more and more looking at cloud capabilities. As an example, we currently do host an archive in the cloud where customers don't have to spend a ton of money on a server and a ton of money on an archive software. They can pay a monthly fee and have these high-level artificial intelligence capabilities at a distance. The longer they want the recording for, the more they pay for that hard drive in the cloud. There is no intelligent uh, NVR locally that someone can potentially steal or, or damage. It's all in the cloud. So being able to have this AI with nothing local other than a, a camera is a very, very powerful tool. And we believe that that's where the, the uh, industry is trending. 
Obviously here at Inaxis Security Systems, we are professionals. We will help you to design your system to your specifications and to your needs. We'll help you also learn about the newer technologies and newer applications that are available today. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments section below and we'll happy to reach out to you. Cheers.